thank you to all of you who have turned up today and um, I'm delighted to see so many familiar faces and so many warm, friendly faces in the room. Um, my name is Fraser Sullivan, I'm the Chief Executive of, of Humanist Society Scotland and uh, this is our first public event again for, for some time since actually we were, we were in this building uh, in January um, last year and it's, it, I'm delighted to be back in person, uh, obviously in a safe way um, um, that we can keep to all the restrictions. Um, the next uh, contribution we've got today um, it isn't going to be in person. Um, it's from Viv Adam, who's one of our um, registered celebrants and who's had a recent terminal diagnosis. Um, I know for many people in the room, Viv is a very close friend, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure it'll be some of what she'll have to say is it will be difficult to hear. Um, but I know very much that she's a very passionate campaigner um, on this subject and has been well before her own personal um, situation. Um, and so I think it is really important for us as humanists um, to have a compassionate approach, to hear from people's personal perspectives, to hear from people like Viv, to hear from people like Josh, like we will do later on in the day. We often think of ourselves as humanists, as people who follow evidence and reason. And of course, we do that as absolutely central to everything that we do. But we also talk about compassion in the Amsterdam Declaration. And it's compassion, I think, on this subject that is really important. And so I'm just going to play Viv's um, uh, video now and um, uh, let you hear her own personal reflection on the campaign. My name is Viv Adam and I'm a humanist celebrant. Working with families towards a funeral has meant I have some insight into the process of death, how it affects the person whose life is coming to an end and also how it impacts those around them. My funeral work led me to train as a psychotherapist and once I'd graduated I did a further diploma in grief and bereavement. I have worked with families and individuals, not only after a person's death, but offering support to people who know that they are themselves approaching death. In August this year, I myself was diagnosed with acute myeloid leukaemia and was given best case scenario with treatment, 18 months to five years, worst case scenario, six months. Now, while I appreciate this is different from a diagnosis of a long-term lingering neurological disorder, it has brought into sharp focus for me what I want in death. Now, before I was a celebrant, I believed in the right to choose to be assisted in death. And my experience as a counsellor has made me very aware of the importance in the grieving process of a peaceful, dignified, good death. And this isn't just in regard to families and friends who will be supporting the dying, but getting a terminal diagnosis means that the person too goes through a process of grief and bereavement themselves. I know I am. Now I'm feeling fine at the moment and perfectly clear thinking. I've had a great life and my last wish is that I should have dignity in death, that I can go peacefully. I have wonderful medical support, but no one can predict how the course of an illness will go. I'm not expecting not to be ill. I can cope with illness and aggressive treatment if it means I can still function and enjoy things. But I don't want to be helped merely to exist. I want to have a quality of life to the very end. Having choice is a mark of civilization. I want to be able to choose when I've had enough of treatment, enough of blood transfusions and chemo. I want to choose when it's right for my life to end, when I can no longer laugh with my friends, read a book, cuddle my dog. Being kept alive in order to die slowly is, in my mind, inhumane, and I fear it. I fear, too, the possibility of pain and suffering in the final weeks or days. Assisted dying, for me, would be the curtailing of suffering in the face of the inevitable. I want the people I love to have good final memories of me. I want to approach death as I think I've approached life, embracing it. 